here with Max Frost. Hello. How are you? Hello, Dustians. Yes, fellow Dustians. How are you? Well, I'm good, personally. I don't know about them. Yeah. They're a lot of losers. Dust yes, in the wind. Me. Yeah, dust in exactly. the wind. They say, eat the dust. Another one bites the dust. Yeah. That's what we say. Another one pops the dust. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so <laughs> I saw recently you got a lot going on. I was on your Instagram page. Shout out to those watching on Instagram right now. It looked like you were in Italy. Yeah. Basically, I was there to carve up, you know, get a little sunshine before I return to my natural habitat of the studio cave. Did you get any footage? Because I know you have a new song coming out tomorrow, right? I do. The video for that I'm shooting in a couple days when I get back home, but the song's called 11 Days. It's about going on a trip to see someone who you've sort of met online or something that you don't know very well uh -huh. i think it's an experience many people have had and that uh we're kind of having that experience right now we're kind of having that experience right now you, know, yeah. you told me that you were a brunette this is weird anyways i went to you catfish. know i was i wasn't catfished it was more i was like soul catfished Ooh. you know what i mean yep. by the person so then i was stuck i was there longer than i wanted to be you wouldn't be there about nine ten days max maybe max. maybe 10 seconds once i was there Ooh. but then you know it is what it is so this is based on a true story yes it is yeah. and it sounds like a real bummer you know he's been soul fished but then he's got a gold rush Ooh. of material Dang. that's called a, that was call off that the a, dome. a transition that um, was off the dome you know he's got a he's got a gold rush coming out this october it's an it's an lp it is an album. It is a long play. Is this the first long play? This is the first long play I've made. Uh, ten songs. Only one of them's out. The second one will be out as of tomorrow, and then the other eight. Am I doing that math right? Will be out when the album's out. October fifth. October fifth. October fifth. So it's going to be ten <laughs> songs. Is eleven days going to be a bonus eleventh song? That would have been smart. Uh, Just saying. I'm actually really regretting now that I'm putting the song out tomorrow now that you're telling me that because well, that would have been smart. You can still add one more song to the LP. I mean, it's a, you got the long play. Maybe I'll just do like a Spinal Tap thing where it's like, it's, there's really 10 songs, but I just count 11 days as the 11th song. Yes, because the song before the intro counts. You know, like, what were they listening to before they put the CD in? Exactly. Like their own depressing thoughts. That's song number one, <laughs> depending on how you're counting. What's the, the cause for the title of the album? So I one. moved from Austin to LA in a final sort of attempt to like kind of rebirth my brain from where I was creatively. I kind of resisted moving to LA for a long time. You know, it's just, it's a beautiful place and it's kind of the spot everyone goes for, for this business, but it kind of felt too much like the same thing all the time that I was there. But I eventually knew I had to go if I really wanted to like dive into just working every day you know yeah and so I went there and uh, and I met this guy and I, I started smoking pop dust and uh, then, that's down and then I wrote this record no I uh, Hollywood I, I know how it is yeah it's like I went out there to sort of recreate what I was doing and I I feel like at least for for changing it completely I definitely succeeded in that and so I guess gold rush is sort of playing off of uh, well, you see, back in the day, they went and looked for gold on the West Coast and dug it out of the ground, and well, what do you there you think? go. Because we do get a lot of people in here um, that, when I talk to them about like, the trajectory of their career and how they got to where they currently are, yeah. um, and obviously you're about to do another national television thing, so things seem to be working out. Do you feel like L.A. was a good call? I think so. I mean, I think, I think if you're too comfortable wherever you are, get out of there. What if you're constantly uncomfortable? then stay right there. Ah. Yeah. I see. So there's gonna be a tour popping off. There's a video that you're shooting in a couple of days. What else is going on in the yeah. life of Max Frost? So this tour, I think will be the first time that I change up this one man show thing that I've been doing, which to anyone who hasn't seen my show, usually what I do is I have a whole bunch of instruments on stage and I'm basically looping stuff and kind of doing it all at once where I like, not all at once, but you know, in sections and I've been by myself up there for a long time which is part of the reason for the car but but it's also it's just gotten lonely you know I've just had these moments on stage where I turn around and there's just there's no one else there you know so I'm trying to I'm trying to change it up and I was gonna learn to juggle but instead I got a drummer so there's gonna be now a drummer on stage 
so I won't be the only one playing drums. I think it'll kind of stay the same in the front, where it's, you know, I'll have the keyboard and the bass and the guitar and all that stuff, and I'll be jumping around, but I think it'll be better to have someone kind of anchoring the set. So it'll now be the two-man, one-man musical spaceship. That's great. I mean, yeah. What did you start on? Uh, I started on guitar super young. I started playing drums and bass and stuff like that as I grew into an old boy. Is it just that, is it, I mean, I guess Austin, Texas, it's hard to come across a musician, right? It is. So, yeah. hard to start a band. A paid one, at least. You had to play, play all the instruments yourself. Yeah, well, you know, it's also just a place where you, it's sort of such a non-designated scene, like, there's no genre, like, it's not, you go to Nashville or anywhere, there's kind of a scene going on. With yeah. Austin, it's just a bunch of people who can play, yeah. and who want to play, but it, it, there's definitely, like, a blues past to it, but it's also kind of Willie Nelson world, and yeah. Yeah, they have the statue of Willie, so it's really kind of undefined, so you can kind of go play a lot of different genres, you can... There's just a lot of opportunity for people to just kind of freely just experiment there, you know, yeah. whether that's you want to play different instruments or if you want to try pop dust or whatever, you know, it doesn't really matter. And speak, you decided to reignite a fire yeah. under the frost, the frosty fire yeah. of pop. Yes, I was, I'm melting it down. What were you doing before that? Death metal? It was just kind of more eclectic, uh, I was just kind of doing, you know, a more eclectic Thing that I think was there was a little bit more of like a, a synthesis to what I was doing there was like an effect that I always was consistently putting on my voice there was a little bit more of like a leaning toward like a gorillas kind of thing yeah where I feel like now what I'm doing is a little bit more straight up it's a little bit more just kind of like here's the song in my voice and not how, as do, much you, how do you figure out how to as a writer like hone in on a style that you can then create you know consistency with but it still be true to you because unless you're just like hey, everybody I went to LA figured out what worked and I just said sign me up Satan sign me up Satan yeah I mean I I don't know how I don't know if there's a consistent way to go find it I know that for me what worked was just writing a lot of songs and just kind of finding you know obviously there's a there's a place where you're gonna tend to go but then you have to find what in that is really the part that's worth chasing and challenging out, you know, and and not getting necessarily stuck in a rut and just trying to find, like, what are the songs that feel almost uncomfortable to sing because of, like, where they're coming from rather than what feels safe, you know. Just being, like, a little bit, f just not like, you know, something totally insane, but just something yeah. that's a little bit further than where you want to go, I think is usually where getting out of your stuff happens zone in general. Yeah. And is that subject matter wise or also just like what you're doing musically? I think both. I think both. I mean, I think that, you know, this record's definitely step tiptoeing a lot closer, like to the hip hop line of stuff than I ever have before. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't consider anything I'm doing on the album rapping or anything like that. Are you thinking of working with any other artists? Is there anyone that you would just love to jam with? A lot of people I'd love to jam. You know, when you say jam, when I think about just jamming, I'd like to jam with the guy from Tame Impala, just, or like just make a track with that guy. He's dope. He's, he's Shout dope. out to Tame Impala guy. He's a huge fan of the show. And then, I don't know, you know, I really haven't done very much work with like female singers for like actual, I mean, I've produced and written for a lot of female singers, but I've never actually done any like duet stuff or anything like that. So if anyone has recommendations, go message me or comment something on my on my MySpace page. We should <laughs> ask. It's coming back. It. <laughs> um, if, do you find, were you doing a lot of writing and producing for artists while in LA or also in Texas or? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of how I started. I mean, I was always making music for myself, but I, I feel like I started kind of actually consistently really working when I was doing it for other people. Like there yeah. was a this amazing like prodigy singer named Nikki Yanofsky out of Canada who was like managed by Quincy Jones and everything that I started writing songs for which was cool and you know got to meet Quincy Jones and everything which was cool and Shout out to Quincy. she's still putting out yeah. records that are great and she's out there doing her thing you should check her out and uh, you know a couple other things but I definitely always feel like writing creating for other people helps me create for myself because it's good to like lose the perspective a little bit yeah 
the a question about a song <clears throat> uh, is like, what's the story about the Paul McCartney verse in Good Morning? Good reference? Yeah, I've been asked about that. People think that I'm saying, uh, people think that I'm saying forget about yesterday Paul McCartney, like forget about Paul McCartney when that's not, it's like forget about yesterday, right. you know, comma Paul McCartney, like because he wrote a song called Yesterday, you know? Yeah, it's like when Drake said, swimming in the money, come and find me, Nemo. <laughs> you know what I mean? He wasn't saying he that, was, that, that he Nemo, saying that was, Nemo. Some, was, was trapped in like a giant pile of money. Yeah, it's, it's really a Drake reference within a Paul McCartney reference. Yeah, it's, it's, really it's what punchline it rap. It's, yeah, it's punchline. He's, he's not a rapper. Not a rapper. He's, yeah, so you dissed Paul McCartney in one of your tracks. What's up with that? I was, you, you guys beefing? I was hoping, that, yeah. Well, you know, because I saw what happened with the whole Meek and the, the whole Meek Mill Drake thing. Or what's his name? Yeah, Pusha T and Drake thing. And I was just thinking, you gotta do that. How do I take it a step it. further than getting into a beef with Drake? And that's getting into a beef, a rap beef with Paul McCartney. That'd be the only way. Paul, I know you're watching. What you got? You know. <laughs> He's probably the one who asked that tea and biscuits question. Yeah, right? right? That was definitely a Paul McCartney question. <laughs> the fruit tea and biscuits one? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, do you have anything that you want to you wanna say to everybody? I want to thank you again for not bringing up that thing we previously agreed that you wouldn't ask me about. Yes, that thing we will discuss after the show personally. It is not something we should talk about in front of the cameras. Awesome. Thanks, man.